everyone, my name is Kimberly and welcome to another day on Ray of Joke. Hope you all are staying healthy, well, and blessed. I use this platform to discuss different topics related to perceptions and behaviors around personal growth and wellness. However, today's video is going to be a bit different. Starting off this topic may seem like a disconnect from what I plan on discussing today given the disclaimer at the beginning, but I ask that you bear with me and hear me out until the end. So my birthday, uh, likely at the time of this video, is actually today. I really wanted to kind of discuss um, a birthday message, a special message I had. Really these past few weeks, uh, I've been thinking more and more of what I wanted my birthday address to be. And I know one is not necessary, but uh, you know, this is as close to an inaugural address that it's gonna really get, at least for us regular people. So of course I have to have a birthday address or message, right? Um, I wanted to uh, share a special message based on personal reflections I've had and all the life experiences that have led me up to until this point. And before I go into that, I wanted to just start by asking you a question. What are three words you wish you heard more while growing up? So I actually posed this question to my community of friends, family, and peers. Because I was genuinely curious, uh, I believe we all have different lived experiences that contribute to our growth into the people we are today. And I wanted to see what other people's perceptions and thoughts were on this. And I thought maybe by doing that, I could also gain more of an awareness and an understanding of maybe some of the intangibles that were each working towards on our own individual journeys. The overall responses I received were wanting to be told words of affirmation like, you are enough, you are worthy, you are loved. Does learning that these are the most submitted phrases surprise you? Were any of these three words maybe something you thought about for yourself? Interestingly enough, my three words were also, you are loved. And this isn't necessarily to suggest that we weren't told while growing up, I love you or we're special or anything akin to that in our lives. It could just be that maybe those words were lost in the chaos of life. Maybe they were said in passing as people said goodbye or goodnight to one another or as part of a whimsy and an encouraging text message between friends or maybe as a thoughtful expression of passion. But then that really begs the question, why are there still so many of us seemingly starving for more, reaching out for some deeper level of connection? And maybe it's as simple as there being a difference between telling someone their value versus making someone feel it. Or maybe it even goes a bit deeper beyond that. The argument could be made that it starts with us at the individual level. And to a certain degree, I agree. However, where I disagree is on the assumption that we all start life with the necessary tools to make that happen. And that's not necessarily the case. Usually it's through our lived experiences and the freedom to make our own choices in life where we can really explore our identity through our value and self-worth. However, having those value-added deposits from the onset of our lives does make a difference, which is why we're more likely to recall events from childhood development and link um, current events from our lived experiences of the present to those from that period of our lives. As of today, I'm 28, and that is pretty incredible, 28 years of life lived. And when I reflect on that number, I thought about all the people that didn't or don't get the chance to experience that age. 
they weren't that much different from you or me. And I've had the great pleasure of knowing some of these people at different points in my life. Remembering how much fun it was to be around them, wondering about all the different things they could have possibly achieved if they had gotten to this point. And I also just reflect on how many things have just happened in my life. Like I've been able to do so many things with so much more in store. When I think on it, the future really looks adventurous. Just all the dreams that I have to want to accomplish so many things, want to empower so many people, and just want to live a life without regrets, really. Even more so, I began to really think about how many times they were told the important words they needed to hear before their final seconds. Told how much they were worthy, they were loved, they were valued, and how many times they were actually made to feel it. Made to feel like they truly mattered in this wondrously evolving existence called life. While I believe everyone who chooses that path doesn't have the same thoughts that lead them to that point, I do believe that the root cause is tied to a sense of loss of autonomy, loss of meaning or purpose, the greatest things that connect us to this life. Given that we are social beings, that idea of connection and the loss of that connection that tethers us to life has such an impact on us. Even if it's through different mediums, a disconnect with the world around you begins to take its toll. And eventually the things that were once meaningful are no longer filled with meaning. What are the last thoughts you have before you drift off to sleep after a long day? What about right before you have to wake up for school or work? When you're walking outside or driving to the grocery store? when you're contemplating whether or not to pick up the phone for that friend or family member on the other line? Are those thoughts only of staring at a towering wall of pain? Or is that pain followed by thoughts of possibility? And at this point in my life, I've experienced both ends of that spectrum for many days at a time. One end can make you feel extremely numb to life, numb enough not to notice or even care that you're sinking. And at the other end, you feel you can peacefully float with the current and be all right. When I had these thoughts myself, like I felt a sense of shame and hopelessness on a scale I hadn't really ever experienced before. I could admit the truth of what I was experiencing or feeling with myself, but I suddenly found it mentally restricting or taxing to admit that to other people outside myself. And I didn't really want to share the intimate details of my life that represented a state of myself that most people didn't really see when they looked at me. I believe we present the best versions of ourselves. So when that is now called into question by yourself, sometimes it, it it's like an inner, it's an inner battle within yourself that you're trying to really come to terms with. However, I soon realized that the more I battled against the truth of the situation, the more I struggled to keep things from falling apart. More recently, I came to understand that while it's great to have resources dealing with these different issues, if we aren't bringing the discussion of our own experiences to the forefront of these conversations to really create a transparency around the subject, how can we begin to build the better understanding with ourselves and our mental health as a whole? Through this time of battling all these different thoughts, whether it was from sheer stubbornness or inner will, I was able to draw strength from a new source of meaning, or rather a place of meaning that I hadn't visited in quite some time, the desire to create. And I'm not talking too much about content creation, but just allowing my imagination the freedom to breathe outside my mind. Around April or May of 2020, I began writing more regularly again. When I was in college, I didn't really do much writing for myself in that creative space, but suddenly it was 2020 and we all were in lockdown, so you know, you have to find something to do to keep yourself sane, I guess. But I began re 
regularly writing again, uh, writing poems, getting into spoken word, writing songs and fictions, even began revisiting and building on different creative muscles like video editing, music remixing, and creation. And I began talking about wellness as well as it relates to different parts of our lives because I had a desire to have these conversations. And of course, this channel was born through that. It was happening before, but again, I think the pandemic just presented different opportunities of growth. And as I started doing those things more and more, I soon began rebuilding that relationship with myself. As I began to reestablish that relationship with myself, I could then begin to reconnect with the world around me and refocus my energies on my priorities. I recently heard a YouTuber by the name of Aaron Daughtery. Daughtery? 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 I hope I'm saying it correctly. <laughs> I hope I didn't just butcher the name. It seems like such a simple last name. Um, but I'll just link it the video that I'm talking about in the description. You can go see it yourself. But he does a lot of content based around mindfulness and spirituality. And, you know, he mentioned a life hack that I never really gave too much thought about doing. And he mentioned begin the day with something that you love doing. So groundbreaking. Simple but effective. Uh, and it's something that I never really thought about, waking up to your day, starting your day on a positive note does offer so many benefits. I typically start my day before 7.30 because that's when I start work. Of course, me being a night owl and starting the day, I would definitely have to put some discipline behind it in order to put this into effect, but I still think it offers so many benefits. You're happy to wake up to your day rather than waking up to stress. I think during a time where it feels like we're all going through a bit of social fatigue, maybe that is the solution. Not necessarily waking up in the morning and you know, that that's a great suggestion, but more so what I'm talking about is just revisiting the simpler things that make us happy to wake up in the morning rather than just only being in this monotony of the routine. I posted a recent article on my blog where I share a part of my journey with my relationship with mental health, specifically during phases of my adulthood, and you know, kind of lessons around some of what I'm talking about today. So I'll link that in the description. I do include trigger warnings as well, just so you're prepared for that. And this is not to glamorize or belittle these issues, but really to drive home the reality that this can happen to any one of us. This happens to more people than I think we realize. I do believe that in order to create a better understanding and a better relationship with these issues, we need to be able to recognize when we may need to reach out for help and create more open conversations around some of these issues. I just wanted to really share my thoughts here as a reflection of the past year. I do want to say that I, I actually was catching up with a good friend of mine. We found a really, it, it was a really interesting find, a French based type of theme restaurant. It was amazing, an amazing dining experience, like kudos to the staff, they were great. Um, and the menu was absolutely beautiful. I want to go back. But we got to talking because it's been quite some time since we caught up in person. As we were talking, um, she was asking me just what's what's been going on this past year. And when I looked back, I was thinking, oh my goodness, so many things have happened. Poems that I started writing, now I'm looking to move that into like publications, like the fictions that I'm working on are finally in a place where it's like, okay, yes, this is the direction that I want to take them in. The business that I've been doing, like that has also, um, you know, been fruitful in many ways. And even just personal growth wise, I think there's been a lot of self-awareness growth in that. And also finances too, like gotta give snaps to that, like 
paying off the debts, getting all that straightened out. So there's a, been a lot that has been accomplished this past year, and it hasn't always been sunshine and rainbows, obviously, but I'm glad that I got to get to this point where I can really look back and be happy that I had these experiences that made me into, I believe, a better person today than I was a year ago for just having gone through that journey. This isn't the easiest topic to discuss by any means, but I do hope I left you with a little something to think about today. I know at some points it seemed like I was a little bit vague, but again, I hope I provided just thoughts and reflections today. Again, this is a different video, sharing just things that have been on my mind uh, these past few weeks. If you want to reach out to me about anything I talked about today, do feel free to reach out to me in the comments or send me a DM um, on any of my social media. In honor of my birthday and the three words sitting in our hearts, I actually did donate $31 to each of the three organizations that I've listed in the description uh, that I feel have not only made an impact on me and people in my life in different ways, but have brought strength to voices of the community. I do believe that everyone has a voice and should be given the chance not to simply be heard but understood, especially around these issues. If you want to donate to them or learn more about what they do or would like to just help in other ways, I'll definitely include their links in the description as well. Learn more about them, see how you can support them. And if you want to match my donation of $31, go for it. Um, it can be for one of the organizations, it can be for all three. Uh, really your call. This birthday weekend, I decided to do something a little different. I usually don't celebrate my birthday, but now I decided to just celebrate it a little bit. Nothing like too crazy, like I'm not going to Vegas or like skydiving or anything like that. Not to say that isn't in the plans in the future, but um, definitely going to have some fun, um, get together with friends and also pamper myself a little bit. So stay tuned to all you wonderful warriors out there fighting the good fight. Stay golden.